and as architects and designers where we tend to use them a lot more. Obviously in high rise buildings because it's very fast and quick to construct. But I think every architect almost starts off their tryst with steel by doing some form of industrial or warehouse building because these are like the more predominant uh, typologies that are getting built nowadays with this material. So we're looking at a lot of industrial as well as warehouse buildings. And of course there are residential buildings which are like very unique that are like using gate steel construction. And another thing that we find, that I find particularly interesting to work with is working with temporary structures and working with things that are like pavilions that we often try to put up as you know a design house or as a design showcase wherein we use steel because of like the obvious advantages of having the material. So today when I do go through the presentation, I'm going to talk about a little bit about what, what we've done, which is more like, I wouldn't call it high rise because obviously, sir, it doesn't like qualify in the 300 meter range, but more like a modular kind of a steel construction. And the reason why we went in for that was to do for the speed of construction. Uh, there is a little bit of industrial warehouse because that's some, some experience that I also have, as well as a temporary structure, which is I think what I'm really, really passionate about trying to like bring to this, uh, to this forum today. So advantages, disadvantages, all of us have seen these slides. We all understand this, we're all familiar with this. I'm not talking to a group of people that are not uh, informed about these aspects, but really the number one item, why do we really like steel? Super quick. Um, you know, everything can get done prefabbed off-site, then brought on-site, everything kind of gets done very, very quickly. The fact that it's very flexible, this is something that we as designers use a lot. I think that example that I will be showing you is wherein we used steel for this particular project and actually um, specified it to the client just because of the kind of flexibility that it offered in terms of expansion and making the building sort of grow over time. Uh, the other fact that we have ready-made structural sections, we can do any kind of shape, we have made of joining, whether it's welding or whether it's bolting, riveting, etc. All of it can be done in a very exciting manner. The disadvantages, I think again, we've spoken about this quite a bit through the day, so you do lose strength and at high temperatures. And the fact that, you know, I work a lot in a lot of coastal areas, and we find that there is a general resistance to the adoption of steel as a structural uh, element. This is because of the kind of humidity and, you know, being by the sea coast and things like that is concerned. So here's where my, the inspiration started. I think, um, this was as a young architect going and like visiting. I was like in Chicago, Chicago for a very long period of time. So Milwaukee was like a hop, skip and jump away. And it wound up that I was uh, doing the uh, Milwaukee new master plan for their fifth ward. So when this happened, there was a lot of going back and forth. And apart from like, you know, hanging out at the breweries and getting like a, having a good time, we also visited the Milwaukee Art Museum, which I'm sure all of you are somewhat familiar with. This is a structure that was designed and built, I mean, designed by Santiago Calatrava. It was one of his earlier works. I mean, it get constructed sometime in the early 2000s. And it was actually an addition to an already existing art museum on a very scenic part of the lake. Now, this is a steel structure. And what is fantastic about it is I think that it's a kinetic steel structure. So it's like, it's not only got that aspect and that sort of continuous beauty that it's like the material itself allows you to be able to design with, but it also has this added feature where the building will open and close and flap its wings like a bird at like 12 noon, which I thought was just like, you know, out of the world. I'd never seen something like this. So you get inspired by the possibilities of steel and you know what it means to be able to design with it. And this was the benchmark in my head. And then I came back to India and then this was my first real project. So it was very different from you know, the inspiring possibility of like having a kinetic structure that can flap its wings. Rather, this was something that was a little bit more real and, you know, things that people really wanted. And this is like the kind of steel that was very acceptable in our market today. So obviously, putting up a pre-engineered building, doing warehouses and all of that. The one design that I wanted to talk about a little bit in detail was this one for, the, for a high-rise school that we actually designed. This is a project wherein, you know, we had to come up with a solution that we extremely quick to build. The client was very, very, you know, focused on getting set for a particular academic year. And usually this start, tends to happen with our institutional projects because they start taking in admissions even before, you know, they have sanctions to build on site. 
But this is the kind of environment that it is, and given that it was the case, and that we were looking at something that was expandable, uh, you know, coming up with a steel structure was something that we thought was going to really make a lot of sense. So I'm just going to skip ahead right now and pull up that movie that kind of shows you our idea of what we were thinking. So yeah, so that was basically the idea in a nutshell. And the reason it was as complex as that was not because the design was complex, but more because the programming and the phasing was really complex. So we needed to do three different schools. As I kind of showed you, just a second, I'm just trying to get this back on track. Yeah, so we're trying to do three different schools or three different curriculums on a single site and trying to do them with different phasing depending on when the admissions were getting done. So obviously we had to build between terms. There was a lot of work that had to be done during uh, the fact that the school was still functioning or one of these schools might still be functioning and we still had to sort of you know, juggle all the program and kind of make it work. So our solution to come up with uh, for this particular project was to do something which actually had a steel frame, had prefabricated classrooms and walls, like typical wall typologies, that could just come in and then just be slotted together. So, Cutting down your construction time was the essence of this entire project, and that's kind of what drove all the other decision making out from here. So, really simply, like it's a very simple uh, like program. We had like three towers, as you could see. We had the interconnecting blocks that had other aspects of the programming, right from sporting to like the canteen, as well as like your administration. And there was a pre-primary block that was not as crucial because it didn't really have to have that same kind of rigor on the timeline. So we did use a separate building block for that. So why steel? I kind of did explain this. Um, we were looking at something that would demonstrate that this building could be very modular. It could expand, and it could expand very quickly, like over the frame, over the frame of like, a, say, a summer vacation. So we needed to be able to build an entire new school in summer vacation. How do we do that? We basically said, OK, we have all the steel frames in order. And in place, on day one, for all the three towers, and then we expand modularly depending on you know, how and when we need the number of classrooms that we do need to have. So just very simply, what we tried to do in terms of the design and the proposal, we had columns that were protected with gypsum as well as the vermiculite and, and some like intumescent paint uh, coatings to do the fire protection. We were looking to try and build flexibility and looking at you know, using metal decking sheets and having the flooring done in a very sort of you know, composite slab manner. So this is just a little bit more explaining the kind of program and how we did that. So as you can see, we had staggered floors. Uh, some of the areas were like uh, more than a single story and we used these very systematically along with studying where you know, the wind directions were and how we could bring in ventilation into the cores of the building. Another thing that happened in a single floor stack is that every three floors, we kind of changed the floor plate. And we did that almost to try and accommodate the program as well as to have those you know, external outdoor spaces that a school does require. But a school like this could not afford given the fact that we were going vertical. So we tried to have like these, you know, these, these tall atriums that would then change their profile every three floors. But as the ones in the corners remain the same because this is in a very hot and humid kind of, a, I mean, hot, not humid climate. Therefore, we were looking at a proposal of having evaporative cooling as well in these kind of corner spaces. So I'll just run you through some of the visuals. So 
here you can see that, that tall stack in the corner that I was talking about. You can see all the cross placing and all of that stuff that came in from our structural team. Uh, design wise, we were looking at trying to do something that felt and looked very contemporary and was literally just an effect of the fact that it was a modular design that was then being repeated over the stack. So that's a kind of overall look of what the school looked like. So you can see the three towers. All of these elements on the facade were designed with integrated light shelves to bring in light to the classroom floor plate, as well as we kind of decided on you know, X number of modules and then played along with the entire composition of it so that all of these could also then be prefabricated, you know, concrete walls that can just be brought in and plugged into site. So again, everything is about, you know, building very, very quickly. So just some more views of that. I think everything that we do at Shilpa has always been about sustainability. So sustainability is something that kind of comes in very naturally to us. Uh, on this particular project, I think steel being, I mean, and I didn't, I felt that, you know, we haven't talked enough about how steel can be a sustainable material, but steel is a very sustainable material from the aspect of the kind of recycled content that it does have and things like that. So, but apart from that, I think the sustainability aspect of using the material comes from just the sheer kind of, you know, time versus economy balance that it does bring into a project. But that apart, infusing every sort of project that we work on with some elements of sustainability, that is something that we look at at the very core of our design philosophy. So here in this particular case, as I was mentioning, we had located the wind towers that were looking at bringing in air and doing a kind of an adiabatic evaporative cooling system, along with a system of HVLS, which is high velocity, low speed fans that would then bring about, you know, a nice cool environment and keep the school without air conditioning all the spaces at about, you know, 28 degrees Celsius. <coughs> so just some of our other like calculations in terms of roof usage areas for renewable energy versus planting and uh, just trying to do quick calculations to try and get everybody on board as to why we needed to have renewable power as part of the school program. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was one of our very recent projects. I'm literally like reeling from the aftermath of this entire, you know, sustainability festival that uh, the foundation that is associated with our office just planned over last weekend, which happened on the 22nd and 23rd of April for Earth Day. So we wanted to do a sustainability pavilion that showcased the idea of modular uh, sustainable housing, which is something that is somewhat of a research paper that we're working on internally, and do it in a manner in which it could be erected and showcased to the larger public through having a steel structure on site. So we did a sustainability pavilion as part of this festival, which drew in like over 6,000 people for like just a two days worth of like, you know, showcasing in the city. So um, the idea was that we wanted to use materials and showcase materials that were inherently sustainable or steel. So these were our kind of two parameters. So we, we went in with using a little bit of weathered steel. Uh, we like using bamboo a lot because it's rapidly renewable. We just wanted to showcase it to the general public. I mean, I guess it's, this was an event where we were looking at drawing in like citizens to participate for a cause of sustainability of the for, for the cause of giving back to the earth. So the idea is that the people that are coming in are not at all technical. They have like no idea about you know what they're looking at. But just to kind of give them a flavor of what is out there in the market today that you could possibly consider if you are in that space of like building a home or doing some kind of renovation or what it means to try and just make those choices that then help you make a slightly more informed decision on what could be then earth friendly. So we had bamboo in there as well. Uh, we were trying to, again, as I said, showcase steel, but in all kinds of formats. So we did uh, use a lot of like scrap steel as well, and the kind of steel that we used for that was uh, flat, flat gauge uh, steel that had been used as a part of post-industrial uh, process of making cycle and motorcycle chains. So we did use that just because of the kind of aesthetic that it has and that it did add to the pavilion. Of course, we had boards that were made of bagasse and like, you know, more uh, rapidly renewable materials. 
We used carpet because we thought that, you know, we needed to kind of showcase it to the public. And I don't know, but it's just that, and it brought in color. And of course, we had like decking sheets and things like that, that again, again, tallied with the idea of, you know, quick speed steel construction. We had wood plastic composite. Um, the entire event itself was focused on, you know, trying to reduce plastic usage in the city. Uh, over two days, we collected almost 300 kgs of plastic that was then, like, you know, taken back to the city corporation to be repurposed and cast into a road in one of our, like, northern suburbs. But the idea was to try and showcase that, you know, plastic can then be reused and uh, have that also show up as a sustainability material. And, of course, we had glass. Um, so the idea, again, here was to have a really small pavilion. Our, our parameters were simple. Showcase steel as best as possible. Showcase some format of what it means to be able to build modularly or to be able to build something that could then be incremental or build something in which you can then add a panel at a later date and it still won't like, you know, upset your aesthetic like crazy. Uh, showcase materials that are all sustainable in the sense that they are all something that either has, uh, as I was saying, rapidly renewable content or it has some kind of like ability to harness energy or it, it has uh, high levels of uh, recycle content or something that kind of like shows you the uh, option of being able to pick something that has a conscience and uh, to be able to build it in three days. That was the bottom line. We needed to be erect, to be uh, built, erected and taken away from like the festival site for, in exactly three days. And once it's, there's no foundation, there's no nothing, it just has to stand. So, you know, our options were kind of like really driven by what we were trying to achieve at the end of the day. So these were our first sort of like quick sketches of what we wanted to do. So as you can see, I kind of showed you that medley of materials and all of those materials are placed in different panels. And again, this ties down to the idea of that these panels can then be interchanged and we can look at having different materials come in at a different point of time, changing the way the aesthetic of this entire thing looks. So this was day one. Uh, this was on-site uh, factory assembly. We had two days of on-site factory assembly. This was using very simple MS, uh, MS square tubes. Uh, we did not go in for bolting, even though we really wanted to do that. I think the idea was that, you know, we just needed to be fast. It's small enough and we can weld, grind, and then, you know, kind of make it look good. Uh, we went in for a very simple paste finish. We didn't really do anything with painting or anything beyond that. So this was, again, yeah, as I was saying, day one of the frame coming in. So all of these are equal modules, and all the modules could then be fitted with whatever panel of material we decided to then showcase. So here we have it. So the sides are all getting erected. So this was all done off-site in a factory. And then by day two, we started testing what it meant to have, you know, the, the angles and the, the edges done in a way in which we could then, you know, facilitate fixing of the floor and like fixing of... Okay. Fixing of the floor and fixing of the wall panels with like different various materials. So that's what we started testing. So you can see how we started bringing in bamboo. We were just figuring out how to like get it pasted. The, the glass and how to fix the glass into the overall MS frame. And here you can see it's sort of starting coming together. It's just a medley of colors and different materials right here in this corner here. This is that cycle chain scrap that I was talking about. So you can see that all coming in together very nicely. So some other different types of steel that we had. So we had like perforated steel, which was CNC cut. Some weathered steel that was next to it and just our overall sort of composition of things coming together. A little close up of the same materials. And there it is, more or less, frame erected. Uh, we had this done on site uh, the morning off. It got there at about 10 a.m. and all of this was kind of done by about 3 p.m. So we were almost ready to go. The only last bits that needed to be done were the glass and the solar panels, which then started coming in and bringing in the color. So just the way the whole pavilion looked, almost done. 